Yes. My heart is beating fast mm -hmm. because it's so real. First of all, let me explain to you who I am. Thank y'all for coming and allowing me to come and talk to y'all. I'm Max Mama, and I'm an entertainer, I'm an author, I'm a rapper, I'm a singer. This is my book. It's called Tales of Original Bad Girl. If y'all see, this is me on the cover. I got two bangers in my hand. And you know what? People say, Mac, why you got the bangers on your hand if your book is about trying to talk to the kids and tell them where you was at? Because the kids don't want to hear me in a cute little dress sitting with a Bible. Y'all got to see that it's real. So I got to show y'all that it's real. I I'm going to tell y'all a story about my life real briefly. I did 13 years of my life in the penitentiary. The story of Natoka Williams, that's who the police know me as. They don't call me Mac Mama. They don't think I'm cute. When I'm in jail, I got on burgundy or green. I met Lieutenant Capozzi in a halfway house three years ago. That's how I just came home three years ago. This is not when I was little. This is now. It took me all these years to finally get myself together. The only reason I was able to write a book, to make music, is because I never gave up my dream. But before I had a dream, I had a hardcore life. My mother, y'all got moms here and fathers, which is like an unheard of thing, because my father was in prison all my life, okay? I met him when I was 19, and I was in prison. But y'all got y'all mothers. My mother died when I was 16 years old from the AIDS virus. She was a dope fiend and she was a crackhead. Okay, and I was, that made me a beast. Okay, I was very hateful. I was very angry. I hated God. I hated the world. I blamed everybody because my mother was a dope fiend and a crackhead. But my mother did that to herself. But I used that as an excuse to destroy my life. I never gave myself a chance. I sold crap. I started boosting. I shot four people. My first bid was for cutting up a girl, giving her 300 stitches. I was a beast. I was an animal. Society looks at me. I got six felonies. I could never get a job. I can't clean nobody's toilet bowl. So I had to create an opportunity for myself. And thank God he gave me talent, and I was able to make music and, and make the book. My book is called Tales of Original Bad Girl because this is real. You see how two people just got carted out of here, and now they're going to jail? Maybe they won't stay for a month. Maybe they'll come home tomorrow, but it's 24 hours that they got to be treated like an animal. This is real. Homegirl didn't want to cross her legs. That's crazy. I was like, Sharon, please cross your legs. It's not that serious. Y'all taking little things and y'all making big situations that y'all are not going to be able to change. Because like these brothers said, when you get a felony, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, yo. I just was in Niantic for five years. It was the worst experience of my life. I am from Brooklyn, New York. I skated through the penitentiary system doing great bigs on Rikers Island, Albion, Taconic. New York system ain't nothing like Niantic. They showed me what jail was, okay? They taught me. I never knew females could be locked in eight hours a day. I thought that was just for the dudes in Sing Sing. Okay, it's real, okay? I'm a woman, so I'm talking to the ladies. The guys, y'all have the men, but you know, females, we got to talk to each other, so I got to put y'all up on game, how it really is. I left some chicks in Nyanic, they have a Y.O. system in there. They're 15, no, they're 16, 17, and 18 years old, and they are in there for 45 years for murder. They was gang banging. I couldn't believe it, the New Yet, the Nyet days, they in there with the gangs. They in there with 30 years. I thought that was like against the law to get that much time. They are not playing with you young girls, babies. Y'all better, if, if, if somebody's telling you something like cross your legs and that's a problem, there is a serious yeah. issue. That man was telling that lady something, that little young lady something to, to uplift her. But if a nigga would have told her, yo, ma, I want some, you feel me? Let me get that. I want some head. Maybe she would have went for it. Maybe she wouldn't have. But cross your legs? Now you're going to jail? It's out of control. I'm telling you something. Because I know nobody was better than me. Nobody was tougher than me. I shot four people. This is real. People look at me and they don't believe it till they read my book and I break down the story. But thank God I don't have battle wounds. Thank God I don't look like I did 13 years in the penitentiary, penitentiary and I don't talk like it. And I have class and I have <coughs> manners because a lady raised me, my godmother. Thank God for her. Because my mother was a crackhead and dope fiend. She was busy getting high. She was a beautiful person, but she had problems. You understand what I'm saying? I wasn't abused, but by her life, 
And what she went through, I took it upon myself to say, you know what? I'm going to be mad, I'm going to be angry, and I'm going to run to the streets because nobody loved me. But that wasn't true. People did love me, and people prayed for me. And I think I always say my mom died when I was 16. My godmother died, you know, when I was about 20. And I say my mom's on my right and my, and my godmother's on my left. And they guided me through because I never got shot back. I never got cut back. And I did time, but I learned when I did my time. When I did time, I said, you know what? I'm going to go to school. I got my GED in prison. I went to college in prison. You guys got an opportunity. This is your first arrest. You have an opportunity to get a proper education. You have an opportunity to really do something with your lives. Don't let this first arrest send you on a course that's going to take you somewhere that you may not never come back from to your 40, 38. I look good. I think I'm young still, but I'm 38 years old. And I just came home three years ago. Okay? I didn't wake up when I was 16 or 17. When I was 16, I was doing a year. When I was 17, I was doing four and a half years. When I was 19, I was just coming home off of that bid. Then I went back at 25. I didn't learn. Nobody could tell me nothing because I thought I knew it all. I was fly girl. Everybody knew me in my hood. I was tough. I got a rep. But guess what? When I went to jail, none of my friends was around. Only people I can depend on was my grandmother, an old lady. My godmother was dead, my grandmother, my sister, family. Y'all have family. People in the street don't have families anymore. Y'all got to take these people that are concerned about y'all and y'all have to value them. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till God forbid something happened. They get canceled or they die or they get hit by a car. Then you cry and it's too late. You go to jail, baby. Your friends are not going to do nothing for you. I'm here to tell you. They're not going to send you no money for commissary. Parents, while I'm talking about that, and I talk about it in my book, had I went to, my whole biz was sweet. I had heavy flavor sneakers. I had money on my commissary. Had I had a hard bid, it might have deterred me from coming back. When they go to jail, don't send their asses shit. Nothing. 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 Jail give you soap, and they give you a toothbrush, and they give you toothpaste, they give you skips, they give you a t-shirt, two outfits, two green pants, two burgundies. That's all you allow them to have. Don't visit them. Let them suffer, I beg of you, because I didn't, and that's why it took me so long. I kept going to jail. Jail was a playground to me. I was cool in jail. I was popular. Don't do it. That's the first mistake parents make. Okay? Don't do it. I'm hopefully this will be your last time that y'all go. You can either take what we're saying and go in there, one out the other, or you can kind of listen and like be really on some, yo, these people came up here to drop some jewels on us. See, I can relate to y'all because I'm still hip hop. I'm on, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm out there. I'm doing shows. I'm traveling around the world. I published my own book. I'm in this week's Hip Hop Weekly. So I'm telling you something because I'm a cool chick telling y'all. You feel me? This is this week's Hip Hop Weekly. This is my book, Tales of Original Bad Girl. I got a great review. So listen to me. You know why I say that? Because when I was young, I didn't want to listen to my people, my grandmother. I was like, they don't know what they're talking about. I'm in the streets. I'm hood. You don't know what you're talking I'm getting money. I got to take care of myself. I got to do this. I got to do that. I know what I'm talking about. So listen to me. They know what they're talking about. They did this. If we don't know what we're talking about, then come on now. We're not squares. You feel me? We came up here to just put some in your, in your ear, in your heart. Some of y'all going to get it. Some of y'all not. The ones that's not, obviously they left in cuffs. Not cool, not cute. I just pray for y'all, and I hope that y'all get something out of what we said to y'all today. Remember, two things. You made a mistake, but you can change. Because guess what? If Mac Mama changed, <laughs> with six felonies, 13 years under my belt, gangster chick, then anybody can change. Don't let nobody tell you you can't change. Let today be your change. Tomorrow is a new day. Ma, I'm sorry. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to study. I'm going to continue to make you proud. Just because you made a mistake don't mean that you fucked up forever. Okay? I love y'all. I'm a little bit more mushy. I was born on Valentine's Day. I love y'all. Please. Y'all babies are beautiful. Y'all handsome. Y'all got a chance. Don't wait till it's too late and y'all here telling a story. You feel me? 
And I got some books for y'all. Couple. I didn't bring a lot, but whoever got the parents, I'm going to talk to the parents. Yeah. Whoever is deserving, I'm going to give it to the parent. Okay. And if they feel like you could get it, you could get it. If not, you'll see it in the streets. It's all over. But it's a message in my book. The bangers is going to get y'all. The sexiness is going to get y'all, especially guys. Oh, that mama got a fat. Mm, she bad. <laughs> but the message is real. That's how I rope y'all in. I can't rope y'all in on no coins. I know. I know. I'm from the streets. But when you read the story, you're like, oh, I got girls hit me on Facebook. Mad mama, you so inspirational. Da, da, da. I, I learned. I'm trying to G y'all up, especially the ladies, especially y'all. Yeah, all the older guys y'all want to get with, the drug dealers, the cool guys on the block, don't go for it, mom. Okay, don't go for it. You're going to get abused. You're going to get beat. Your self-esteem is going to be down because all they want from you is sex, and by the time they finish with you, they're going to be on to the next one. You're going to be pregnant. Your mama going to take care of the baby. You're going to put that on your mama. You ain't thinking about no baby because you still want to party. Then you're going to have two more kids. Your mama got to hold them two down for you. Don't do it. Don't become a statistic. And y'all know, know what I'm talking about. Y'all got friends that got kids right now. So I'm not even bullshitting you. I'm telling y'all some real shit. It's 5 to 7. I'm going to cut it. I love y'all. Parents, thank y'all so much. But you can do it.